Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I have an unboxing for you today. And no, I couldn't wait till I got home. Actually, I'm a little bit scared on this particular item. I've got the nerves really acting up on me. I'm actually looking for my knife right now. Here it is. And some of you guys said this is an early knife, but this is just a pocket knife. Chill out, it's nothing big. Anyway, this item, I got it from Best Year Collective because it is completely sold out everywhere that I looked. So this item went through Best Year Collective's quality control and they deemed it authentic. And so let's see, because I'm not sure. Okay, so what is it? You might say it is a Marc Jacobs, the tote bag mini in orchid haze. And since I have two Marc Jacobs leather bags at home, I think I should be able to tell the difference between authentic and non-authentic. But I asked the seller, I said, where do you get these bags from? And she said, all over the world. And I said, well, where did you get this bag from? And then she stopped talking to me. And I don't know if I was just being super annoying or what, but at a glance, it looks okay at a glance. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this home and I'm gonna compare every single aspect of this bag to the bags that I have at home and make sure that this sucker is authentic. I mean, like I said, glancing at it, it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna have to look at it in more detail. Okay, I'm home. I'm gonna do a comparison here. I have some of the papers from the other bags that I have, and I'm gonna use cement and the rose dust barcodes. This is what they look like. And this one is the old style. I know these are legitimate, but it looks different. All three of them look different. So I don't think I can go off that for authenticity. I have heard that wrapping the handles like this is more likely to be authentic than if it was clear plastic. So that's good. It has the old style Marc Jacobs dust bag. The new ones have Marc Jacobs written all over them. And I don't have an old style dust bag? I don't think. Let me check. Actually, I know I don't because the canvas, the denim, and the canvas one that I have did not come with dust bags. But what I could do is just compare them in terms of how they feel and perhaps the size. That's interesting. The dust bag that I got for the new one is smaller than the dust bag I got for the cement one. It doesn't necessarily prove anything, but it is interesting. I wonder if the dust bag is big enough because of course it doesn't come in the dust bag. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty well big enough. It takes up the whole bag. Let's compare the wording on the dust bag to one of these authentic fonts that I have on the papers. It looks good to me. I thought what I would go ahead and do is I don't want to unwrap the strap. This looks legitimate how this is packaged. One thing I wondered about is when I got mine, they had cardboard on each side, not this type of stuffing. So that's different. It still has this pocket, which is made out of like a linen type material and it says full grain leather and that's stamped going outwards. Let's see what this is. Yep, this is stamped the same way. I should turn it over so you can see it better, but I'm going to compare them. That all looks pretty legitimate to me. There is a card in here. This must be the old style papers. It says 100% split cow leather with polyurethane coating. That's interesting. This one just says 100% cow leather. 
It says it's a naturally tan leather, a delicate product. The polyurethane coating, I imagine that's on the inside and maybe they've just changed their verbiage because if you remember, they talked about there being polyurethane on the inside. I'm gonna leave that in the bag for now. So the last thing is this little tag on the inside. It says, made in Vietnam. It has a barcode and that matches the number on the little tag. And it says 100% new material only content polypropylene. And then the back is in a different language. So let's look, this is the inside of the bag. You can see it has the tags and everything. Let's check this one out. Made in Vietnam, it's got the barcode. Then it also says new materials only polypropylene. So they're looking pretty much the same to me. Let me see. One, two, three, four. There's four stitches across the top. And then the sides appear to be constructed the same. This one here is like an eighth of an inch longer from there to there. Not even that, just one line over one and a quarter. And this is exactly one and a quarter. That could be just human error. I think it's legit. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Okay, so I asked you what you thought. Is this an authentic bag or is it not? And since I asked that question, I have figured out that it is not an authentic bag. I messaged Vestair Collective who authenticated this bag and asked them for a return. And I did that because I cannot stand counterfeit products. I really can't. It is so close to the real thing, but it's not the real thing. And let me tell you how I figured it out. So I was ready to basically cut the tags off, but before I did, I wanted to try on a strap that I bought for this bag. The strap that I bought for this bag was from Leo and Angeline on Etsy, and I can link it below. I showed it with my Rose Dust Marc Jacobs Mini the Tote Bag, and it looked gorgeous with that bag. But this is the bag I bought it for, and it is stunning. And the hardware on these straps is better than what Amazon gives you. The plating is better and you get extra length by a fair amount over what the Amazon straps are. So you do get something extra for the extra money these cost. I think they're about $10 more than the ones you get on Amazon. But back to the main event. These bags, I'm telling you, I just went over them with you to show you all the similarities and how I couldn't find a difference. But when I went to clip the strap on is when I found the difference. If you look here, do you see how the D-ring on the Orchid Haze bag has almost no room for a dog leash clip? And how the one on my cement bag has a lot more room for a dog leash clip. So I watched a video on a replica Marc Jacobs, the tote bag, and I was able to hone in on her clips as well as her D-rings and hers looked like this Orchid Haze bag and hers was in the color cement. But regardless, I also went back on a YouTube video for the Orchid Haze bag and I honed in on the D-rings and the clips on her authentic Orchid Haze bag and they looked like this one with more space for your dog leash clip. This one here, this one has barely enough room to clip on your dog leash clip, and that would drive me absolutely crazy. There may be other differences in the font, but my eye is not good enough to pick it out. But the other difference I noticed amongst the video of the replica bag, as well as the video on the Orchid Haze bag that I found was that Sorry, my hands are shaking. You see here on your left, this is my cement dog leash clip. The biggest difference is right here. The ring is so much bigger, allowing for the dog leash clip to move more, which makes it more comfortable to wear because your strap isn't stuck in the same position. The one on the replica doesn't move as much and the ring here is very much smaller. So, those are the two differences I found, 
And I thought, well, I could chalk that up to it just being a different color because with the soft tabby, the candy pink had different clips than the other colors on my coach soft tabby. But I don't think that that's the case with this bag because when I went and looked at the replica bag, it had clips like this, even though it was a different color. It also had D-rings like this, even though it was a different color. But when I looked at one that was authentic, it had clips like my cement bag. I believe this is fake. The other difference I noticed was that the handles are super stiff in comparison to these, which are super, super soft. That's one thing I really like about the cement bag is how soft the handles are and my rose dust. I mean, they just feel so good to the hand. This feels hard. These feel hard. The rest of the bag feels the same to me. I mean, it's a really good replica. The other things are that I noticed was that under here, it's like super, super smooth on the leather. And then when you look at the underside of these on the genuine ones, they're super wrinkly underneath there. And the inside tends to have a little bit more wrinkles as well, but mainly it's just right there that I noticed the big difference. The authentic Marc Jacobs bag is very wrinkly on the back side of the zipper overlay. Maybe that's what you call it. I'm not sure. This one is super, super smooth. When I stick my hand inside this bag, it feels like plastic and this bag feels like leather. And so the polyurethane coating that they used on the inside of this one is just different than the one they used on this one. So unfortunately, I'm super sad. This bag has to go back. It's a fraud, and I'm hoping I don't have to involve my credit card company. I'm hoping that they just accept the return and they're gracious about it. I love this color, so I'm super bummed out. And it's so close, it's crazy. And even on that replica video, she linked it. These sell for about $168 as a replica. And I paid, you know, after taxes and stuff, I mean, I paid her $355 and then I had a coupon. And so it was $362. So this person's making a pretty hefty profit on this bag, buying it from the replica company and then reselling it as authentic. And when I asked the seller, who's a seller out of Canada, if this was authentic, she says she thought it was, but that's why she was on the Vestier Collective platform so that they would authenticate. And that made me nervous. So I said, well, where did you get this bag? Like what country, for example? And she just stopped responding at that point, like I said earlier. And I messaged her last night and just said that I was going to try to return this bag because I did not think it was authentic and that she should be aware that wherever she's getting them from, that they are most likely not authentic. And she wrote back, thank you. So that's concerning. I went on to Vester Collective and I looked at the other bags in this color. I found one in Canada that was, I think, $5.55 to start with. And that one had the correct clips. And then there was one in another country. I don't remember if it was like Lithuania or there was one in Thailand. I'm not sure. It may have already sold, but that one had the clips like this one the the d-rings i say clips but i mean d-rings and then also the clips sometimes they'll put a picture where you can see that and sometimes they won't so i would say if you're going to buy on vestier collective ask for pictures of those two items the d-rings and the dog leash clips and see if you can tell that may not be the best way to do it but that's the only way i could tell that was like fail safe and you know of course i just found that this this here isn't wrinkly but that may just be this color Actually, I'm pretty sure I saw this color on a video and they showed the inside and it was wrinkly. So regardless, this is not real. I'm super sad and hopefully she's going back because I don't know what I'll do with this bag if I have to keep it. It makes me sick to think that somebody pulled a scam on me. So I'm Erin and I'm the Handbag Housewife. If you have enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so you are notified when exciting new content such as this comes out. You can also find me on Instagram at The Handbag Housewife and you can email me as well 
And my email is thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you and goodbye.